If you are a criminal defendant, it is better to be a woman than a man. For the same crime and with a similar criminal history, men in the United States are imprisoned much more frequently and for much longer sentences. And this is one gender gap that we hear very little about. Coming up next on The Factual Feminist. Now we incarcerate people in the United States on a scale unheard of in most parts of the world. If you brought together all of those who are now in prison, on probation and on parole, it would constitute like the second largest city in the nation. And it would be close to 90% male. Now the fact that more men than women go to jail, that in itself is not a sign of discrimination. Men are far more likely to be rule breakers, risk takers and perpetrators of crime. This is true cross-culturally. But what happens when men and women are arrested for the same crime? Well, to answer that question, Professor Sonia Starr at the University of Michigan Law School, she examined a huge database of federal criminal cases. Now, unlike other studies that looked only at sentencing, at the sentencing stage, she followed the fate of defendants from arrest through sentencing. And her findings are shocking. <laughs> I mean, after controlling for the arrest offense and criminal history and other relevant factors, and looking at the process from beginning to end, she found that women are significantly more likely than men to avoid charges, to avoid convictions, completely. And they are twice as likely to avoid incarceration if convicted. Now, on average, men receive about 63% longer sentences than women arrested for the same crime. Now, Professor Starr estimates that the gender gap in sentencing is about six times as large as the, as the sentencing gap between black and white defendants. Now, Starr offers a few possible explanations for the gender disparity. I mean, women are often viewed as followers, accessories of their male romantic partners, so judges and prosecutors might perceive them to be less responsible. Uh, secondly, women are more likely to be the primary caretakers of their children, so prosecutors and judges might worry about the effect of jailing mothers. It's also possible that prosecutors and judges are just more easily persuaded that women who commit crimes have some kind of mental condition, mental problem. Well, what is the solution? Harsher sentences for women? No, that is not the way to go. The U.S. is already known as incarceration nation. Well, you don't want more prisoners, that's not the answer. But if the courts are indeed making exceptions for women for their special circumstances, they should consider doing the same for men. And as Professor Starr points out, about one in every 50 American men is currently behind bars. And we could think about gender disparity as perhaps being a key dimension of that problem. So here we have a pressing gender equity issue with huge social consequences. But if you look at the major women's websites, you find mainly complaints about how women are the second class citizens in our criminal justice system. I mean, on the ACLU website, you learn that women receive harsher sentences for killing their male partners than men receive for killing their female partners. This is completely false. The source the ACLU uses is a 1980s fact sheet from a women's advocacy group, but a, a much more serious study was carried out by the Bureau of Justice Statistics, and they found that even if you exclude all cases where women killed a husband out of fear or self-defense, women still received shorter prison sentences than their husbands, a 10-year difference on average. But in the current male-averse environment, it's the ACLU fiction that gets noticed and repeated. The incarceration gap sheds light on a serious problem in the American gender equity movement. I mean, alleged inequities against women, no matter how trivial and, and inconsequential, and no matter how privileged the women involved, these, these generate lots of media attention, action initiatives, hashtags. Meanwhile, millions of men, mostly poor, disadvantaged, they're in jail for crimes that would have led to far more lenient punishments, or not at all, had they only been daughters, sisters, mothers, wives, instead of sons, brothers, fathers, and husbands. The over-incarceration of males may be one of the most serious gender inequities of our time, yet this injustice is nearly invisible. Well, is there anything we can do about the gender gap in criminal sentencing? And why don't more people seem to care? Well, let me know on Twitter and Facebook in the comments section, and thank you for watching The Factual Feminist.